Hi everyone. Today in this video, we are going to discuss about well-known drug digipalm. What is this digipalm? The suffix palm indicates this drug is a benzodiazepine. These are a group of drugs which are ending with the suffix palm. And here palm indicates these drugs are positive allosteric modulators. So they are not directly acting on the receptor but they are acting on allosteric site but they increase the activity of the receptor so they are positive modulators acting on the allosteric site that's why they are given with the suffix palm positive allosteric modulator so just by seeing the suffix we cannot say that they are simply benzodiazepines because we have another drug phenol dopam which is a dopamine agonist acting on the adrenal dopamine receptors and this drug is not a benzodiazepine. Actually, this drug is benzodiazepine without second nitrogen. But still, it is having the suffix palm and it is neither benzodiazepine nor indicated for treating the anxiety disorders. So, this drug is used to treat severe hypertension where it is going to increase the renal vasodilatation, thereby reduce the sodium load in the body. Then how we can identify the real benzodiazepines? The right suffix for benzodiazepines is the term AG-palm. We have so many drugs with this suffix AG-palm such as oxazepam, temazepam, clonazepam. All these drugs are benzodiazepines and they are acting like anxiolytics. Similarly within this category we have another type of drugs with different suffix such as alprazolam, trizolam as well as midazolam. These three drugs are having the different suffix azolam, but still they belong to benzodiazepine category. So benzodiazepines can be identified by the two suffix either azepam or azolam. So today in this video we are going to discuss about this digipam, how this drug acts, what are the clinical indications, precautions, drug interactions, contraindications and side effects of this drug we will discuss in this video. So what are the clinical use of digipalm? This drug is mainly used to treat anxiety disorders which are for short term in the patients. Anxiety disorders are classified into different categories. Among them generalized anxiety disorder is one of the anxiety disorder without any proper reason. So digipalm can be used in such anxiety disorders for short term relief of this anxiety. And this drug useful up to four months and it can reduce the anxiety but at the same time overdose of the drug as well as addiction of this drug limits its use in the treatment of anxiety. Similarly digipalm is used to control the symptoms associated with acute alcohol withdrawal. So during the alcohol withdrawal the patient may have physiological as well as psychological withdrawal effects and in such patients we can observe increased agitation, tremor, delirium. All these can be controlled by digipalm for short term relief. So in the acute alcohol withdrawal, this digipalm can be used to control acute symptoms in the patients. And the third clinical indication of digipalm is in the muscle spasms. Digipalm produces skeletal muscle relaxation. So it can be used in the skeletal muscle spasm. Again for short term relief and particularly reflex spasms can be treated by this digipalm. And few of the syndromes such as Stiffman syndrome where the local reflex of skeletal muscle produces skeletal muscle spasm. In such conditions, digipalm can be given in order to relieve the muscle spasm. And finally, the fourth clinical indication of this drug is in the treatment of status epilepticus. Again, in this condition, uncontrolled conversions are observed in the patients which can be controlled by digipalm. In all these conditions, digipalm can be used to control the symptoms. But in the anxiety disorder, this drug can be used for long-term treatment. Now let us see the chemical nature of this drug. So this is the structure of digipalm. Let us give the numbering to this benzodiazepine. We have to start from the nitrogen. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then 6, 7, 8, 9. Now we can simply write the name of this digipalm with taking the suffix benzodiazepine. But this benzodiazepine is having a ketone group at the second position. So we can write this as benzodiazepine 2 one And nitrogens are present at first and fourth position. So this is nothing but 
one four benzodiazepine two o. Then let us identify the side chains and arrange in the alphabetical order. So seventh position chlorine group is present. So seven chloro. First position methyl group is present. So one methyl. Fifth position phenyl ring is present. Five phenyl. And point of saturation is present at the third position, which is indicated by indicated hydrogen as three H. So that is the complete name of diazepam. Now let us see how this drug acts. So within the CNS GABA A receptors are present, which are inotropic receptors. They are pentameric in nature. They are made up of five subunits. Normally on these GABA A receptors, the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA can act. So this GABA can bind to the GABA receptors to open the chloride channels, which produce hyperpolarization. But here diazepam can increase the action of GABA. So this diazepam can bind to one of the allosteric site on the GABA A receptors. So by this, the conformational change will take place within the receptor, which facilitates binding of GABA to the GABA A receptors. So GABA can bind to the two sites. One is between alpha and beta subunits and n is between second alpha and beta subunits. In this way, two GABA molecules can bind to these GABA A receptors, which opens inward going chloride channels. These chloride ions, because of their negative charge, they can produce hyperpolarization. So instead of depolarization, the cells in the CNS are undergoing hyperpolarization, which results in the inhibitory effect. So due to the diazepam, Inhibitory response is increased within the CNS, which results in the decreased anxiety because anxiety is one of stimulatory response. So diazepam can reduce the anxiety. It can increase the sedation, which results in the decreased aggressiveness. And it can increase the hypnosis resulting in the induction of sleep. And it can also reduce the memory resulting in the amnesia. But this amnesia is for temporary, which is called as enterograde amnesia the loss of memory associated with current events. Similarly, due to inhibited response, diazepam can also produce muscle relaxation. The skeletal muscles are relaxed and it can also reduce the sensation resulting in the loss of sensation. All these effects are produced by diazepam by acting on the GABA receptors at a low site, which produce a positive modulation so that GABA can bind to GABA receptors. Now let us see the precautions of this diazepam. One of the important precautions of diazepam is that this drug should be carefully given in alcoholic patients. An interaction exists between diazepam and alcohol. Alcohol generally produce CNS depression and this CNS depression is further increased by use of diazepam. So this combination may result in serious CNS depressant effects such as dizziness, confusion, coma, even death of the patient. So precaution should be taken in the alcoholic patients and these two should not be never combined to avoid serious CNS depression. Another important precaution is that diazepam is used to treat the anxiety in the patients as an anxiolytic. But if the patient is having any comorbid conditions, for instance, if this anxiety coexists with severe depression in the patients, then this diazepam can affect this depressive disorder and it can increase the suicidal tendency. Particularly antidepressants like SSRIs can increase the suicidal tendency. And when these SSRIs are combined with diazepam, they can further increase the suicidal tendency. So diazepam shows interaction with many of the antipsychotics as well as antidepressants such as SSRIs, MAV inhibitors and TCS. So care should be taken when these drugs are combined. And in the patients who are having the severe depression, this drug should be carefully given. And the important action of diazepam is that it can produce respiratory depression. This is a common effect observed with many of the CNS depressants. So if already patient is having any respiratory insufficiency or respiratory failure, in such conditions diazepam produce severe respiratory depression, even common death of the patient. What are the side effects? The important side effects of diazepam are mainly due to its central depression. It produces few of the side effects such as sedation, dizziness, drowsiness, headache, confusion. It can also produce slurred speech, muscle weakness and muscle relaxation. Other side effects include blurred vision as well as double vision, vertigo, tremor, nausea, even constipation and fatigue can be observed. 
and this drug also produce enterograde amnesia, loss of memory of current events. All these side effects can be observed with this digipalm. Similarly, digipalm can also produce some paradoxical effects. These are the effects which are produced by digipalm and they are quite opposite to its pharmacological actions. Generally, digipalm reduce the anxiety and increase the sleep induction. But paradoxically, it can also increase these symptoms which may be associated with its withdrawal effects. So digipalm can produce some restlessness, irritability, agitation, insomnia, some aggressiveness, hallucinations, nightmares and increased muscle spasms. All these paradoxical effects can be observed with the digipalm and when the use of digipalm is suddenly stopped, it may increase these withdrawal effects. What are the contraindications? Just we have seen that digipalm is going to produce respiratory depression. So this drug is contraindicated in severe respiratory insufficiency. So if any patient having severe respiratory disorders, this drug is contraindicated. Similarly, digipalm can produce muscle weakness as well as muscle relaxation. That's why this drug is contraindicated in myasthenia gravis. Myasthenia gravis is an autoimmune disorder where there is a increased muscle weakness. In such conditions, digipalm can further increase the muscle weakness, so it is contraindicated. Similarly, digipalm can produce blurred vision as well as double vision. So this drug is contraindicated in narrow angle glaucoma, where the intraocular pressure is highly increased. In such conditions, digipalm should not be given. In the open angle glaucoma, digipalm should be used with caution. And again, because of respiratory depression, this digipalm is contraindicated in sleep apnea syndrome. This is a syndrome where there is increased bronchoconstriction during the sleep. In such conditions, again, digipalm should not be given. What are the drug interactions? As we have discussed earlier, digipalm can interact with alcohol. So this combination can produce severe CNS depression. Similarly, along with the opioids, opioids are also CNS depressants and they also produce respiratory depression. So digipalm, when it is given with opioids, it can produce respiratory depression. Digipalm is going to be converted into its metabolites. It can be converted into desmethyl digipalm, nodigipalm, oxygipalm, temgipalm. In this way, so many types of metabolites can be formed. We are active metabolites, we are inactive metabolites. But the metabolism of digipalm is mainly controlled by CYP3A4 enzyme. So we have few other drugs like ketoconazole, cimetidine, omeprazole, fluoxamine, fluoxetine. All these drugs are potent inhibitors of CYP3A4 enzyme. So in presence of these drugs, metabolism of digipalm is going to be reduced, which results in the increased effects of digipalm, resulting in toxic effects such as severe dizziness, drowsiness, respiratory depression, severe sedation, and even coma and death of the patient. So care should be taken when these strong CYP3A4 inhibitors are given along with the digipalm. How it is given? This drug is available as tablets as well as solution for intravenous or intramuscular purpose and it is also available as rectal gel as well as nasal spray which are particularly used to control uninterrupted conversions. The dose of the drug should be individualized and it depends on the type of clinical indication in the treatment of anxiety disorders as well as acute muscle spasm and convulsive disorders. The dose of the drug is in between 2 to 10 mg given 2 to 4 times daily. Similarly, for alcohol withdrawal, this drug is given at 10 mg 3 to 4 times on the first day, followed by half of the dose 5 mg 3 to 4 times daily to control the symptoms associated with alcohol withdrawal. So, that's about this digipalm. Digipalm is a benzodiazepine with the suffix palm which indicates it's a positive allosteric modulator. The correct suffix of this drug is AG palm which indicates it's a benzodiazepine. This drug can be used to treat the anxiety disorders and even it can be used for long-term treatment. Similarly, for short-term relief, it can be used to control acute alcohol withdrawal, acute muscle spasms and uninterrupted conversions. This drug binds to GABA A receptors at yellow streak site, thereby increase the action of GABA on the GABA A receptors, which produce hyperpolarization, resulting in the decreased anxiety and increased sedation and induction of the sleep in the patients.
Respiratory depression is one of the important precautions that should be taken when this drug is given. And this drug can also produce CNS depression, so it should not be combined with the alcohol. And because of respiratory depression, it should not be combined with the opioids. Sedation, dizziness, drowsiness, confusion, anterograde amnesia, and muscle relaxation are the important side effects of this Digipa. So that's about this drug. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.